Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and you should have received your ballot for the NRA Board of Directors election. So go vote! If you're not sure how to vote, be sure to check out the video I did on that. Today, we're talking about antique firearms, and no, this is not the CNR license episode. You're gonna have to keep waiting for that one. Circle 10 AK offers some of the best thought out products for your AK platform rifles and pistols. Be sure to check out things like their side folding stocks, muzzle brakes, and all kinds of other accessories. To see all the products they sell, check out circle10ak.com. When it comes to firearms, one of the least discussed are antique firearms, and these aren't from your mother's antique collection. So what exactly is an antique firearm? The definition in the Gun Control Act, or GCA, tells us that an antique firearm is one, any firearm including any firearm which is a matchlock, flintlock, percussion cap, or similar type of ignition system which was manufactured in or before 1898, two, any replica of any firearm that I just described, if that replica is not designed or redesigned for using rimfire or conventional centerfire fixed ammunition, or uses rimfire or conventional centerfire fixed ammunition, which is no longer manufactured in the United States and which is not readily available in the ordinary channels of commercial trade. And lastly, three, any muzzle loading rifle, muzzle loading shotgun, or muzzle loading pistol, which is designed to use black powder or a black powder substitute and which cannot use fixed ammunition. Pretty simple, right? It's important to note that the law specifically states that an antique firearm shall not include any weapon which incorporates a firearm frame or receiver, and that's firearm in the definition of firearm found in the Gun Control Act, any firearm which is converted into a muzzle-loading weapon, or any muzzle-loading weapon which can be readily converted to fire fixed ammunition by replacing the barrel, bolt, breech lock, or any combination thereof. Simply put, if the receiver is capable of being utilized as both a muzzle loader or firearm that uses modern ammunition, it puts it outside the scope of an antique firearm. Likewise, if a firearm was converted into a muzzle loader, it is not an antique firearm. A similar definition is found in the National Firearms Act or NFA. So what's the big deal? Well, if we look at the definition of a firearm in both the GCA and NFA, we see that an antique firearm is not a firearm for the purposes of either. A little more on that NFA part in a second. In other words, the restrictions on the transfer, possession, sale, transport, etc. of firearms do not apply with regard to antique firearms. Antique firearms can be shipped to you directly, sold by anyone, and owned by anyone. So if an individual is a prohibited person due to a federal prohibition, they are still able to use and possess antique firearms. Just to note a caution, state law may vary on that point. So now back to the NFA. I know what some of you are probably thinking, great! The NFA says that an antique firearm is not a firearm for the purposes of the NFA. That must mean I can have an antique machine gun or a destructive device. First, I'd really like to commend you for thinking outside that box, especially in relation to the machine gun aspect. Unfortunately for you, the NFA states that the term firearm shall not include an antique firearm or any device other than a machine gun or destructive device which, although designed as a weapon, the secretary finds by reason of the date of its manufacture, value, design, and other characteristics, is primarily a collector's item and is not likely to be used as a weapon. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it sounds like Congress already thought of that idea and said no way. So your idea for a blunderbuss minigun is out the window. Then what does that mean in relation to barrel length? If you haven't already, be sure to check out the episodes on the NFA and short barrel rifles and shotguns. As you may remember, a rifle with a barrel length of less than 16 inches or an overall length of less than 26 inches is a short barrel rifle and a shotgun with a barrel length of less than 18 inches and an overall length of less than 26 inches is a short barrel shotgun. If you have an antique firearm, it is legal to have a barrel length less than 16 inches if it's a rifle and less than 18 inches if it's a shotgun, provided that the firearm employs a primitive ignition system identified as an exempting characteristic and is not modified to accept modern ammunition. I've included a link in the description to a guide that ATF published on that matter. Why is that? Well, again, like its GCA counterpart, the term firearm in the NFA exempts antique firearms with the exception of those machine guns and destructive devices. While antique firearms are not nearly as popular as their modern counterparts, there certainly are a number of people who enjoy using and owning them. 
They're not regulated like their modern day cousins, and as such, individuals who are prohibited from owning modern firearms may still use them for activities such as hunting. Again, state law may differ, so be sure to check. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of antique firearms and what they are. If you guys like this episode and that blunderbuss minigun, you know what to do. Hit that like button and share it with your friends. Have a question that you want answered on the show? Head on over to the legal brief section on theguncollective.com. Be sure to check out my website, adamkraut.com, for more information on my quest to serve you on the NRA Board of Directors, and don't forget to vote. And as always, don't forget to like The Gun Collective on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Full30, Snapchat, and wherever else you can catch us on social media. And as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.